In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an Excel workbook, how to read from it and write to it using the OpenPixel or OpenPy Excel library that is available in Python. So the first thing we have to do is we have to import the library we want to use. And I'm actually going to import specifically the function we are going to need from this library to create a workbook, an Excel workbook in memory. And that is, oops, I don't need that quite yet. That is saying from the library, import the specific function. Now creating a workbook in memory, it's quite simple. All you have to do is call it, uh, all you have to do is create a variable. I'm going to call it WB and then I'm going to call the new function that I have, workbook. Oh, there we go. So from OpenPixel, I'm importing the workbook function, and now I've created a workbook in memory called WB. I'm going to save it, and you'll see it over here in the directory. It's going to populate as I save it, and I'm going to save it as testing. Oops, not worksheet, it's workbook. I'll be using that in a moment. Okay, so there you go. You can see I've just created a new Excel workbook. It is sitting right there. It's called testing, as I've just called it. We can open it and double check that it is a new workbook that has nothing in it. And that is indeed correct. All right, now if we want to write something to a specific worksheet in Excel, we have to do a number of things. First, we're going to have to select the worksheet we want to work with, and then we're going to have to select the cell we want to work with. So I'm going to create a worksheet variable called worksheet. I'm going to select the specific worksheet that I'm going to be working with. And actually, before we create this variable, let's first see what worksheets are available. I'm going to call the workbook variable that I have, WB. I'm going to say sheet names, and this should supply me with the names of the sheet that we currently have, or of the workbook that we currently have. And as we noticed, we only have one worksheet. It is called Sheet. That is the default for Excel workbooks when they're first created. So in order to select that worksheet, all I have to do is create a new variable that I'm going to store this sheet into called WS. I am then going to call Workbook. And I'm simply going to pass the name of that sheet as uh, I'm going to pass the name of that sheet between these two square brackets. And with that, we have our worksheet variable selected. Now to choose a specific cell that we want to work with and write information to, it is actually the same syntax. So let's use the worksheet variable that we have. Let's say we want to put information into cell A1. All we have to do is type A1 between these square brackets, and we are good to go. If we want it to contain a specific string of letters, it is that simple. You have the worksheet, you have the cell, and then you have exactly what you want to store within that cell. Let's go run this. Let's save it again. Let's reopen our Excel workbook. And with that, you can see our previously empty workbook has the string hello world contained in A1. And now if we wanted to enter information into more cells than just one, which is typically what we want to do with an Excel workbook, I'll show you how to do that. It is the same syntax, and I'm going to use a four range here. So I'm going to say for number in range, let's go from 1 through 20. So I'll use 21 because that is the ceiling. That's where the range will stop iterating. I'm going to say in the first column, in our A column, I want to put, I want to put the number of the range that we are iterating through. And in order to go through that range, in the column itself to make sure that we're going through every single row, 
I'm going to use a f string to capture the number that we are iterating through. In our second column, I'm going to use the b column for this example. I'm going to put, once again, the number here so that we are iterating through and we're hitting the same row each time we go through this range. And I'm going to have this be the number squared. So let's run this cell. Let's once again save to check that our work is being appropriately applied. And there we go. We have the range 1 to 20, and we have its square next to it in the B column. Now, let's close the document. And let's say we want to actually read the new information that we have just supplied in our Excel document. Let's say we want to read, well, I'm just going to actually copy and paste this down, and we're going to read these two cells. Let's have our print statement. And I'm going to print these two side by side so that we should see our expected output is going to be 1 and 1, and then 2 and 4, and so on until we hit row 20. Uh, let's see what this does. Now this doesn't quite give us what we're expecting. What this is actually telling us is that the way that we have this written, this is calling, or this is letting us know that we are looking at a specific cell in this sheet, and we're looking at this specific cell numbering, uh, column name and row number. What we have to do to actually print out information in our workbook is uh, supply the attribute value. This is how we see what is the actual value contained in that specific cell. Let's run this. And there we can see. We are now reading from the Excel workbook the values we just supplied to it. So it is quite simple to use this library to, first of all, create a workbook and then read information from it and write information to it. All you have to do is import the library create the variable, access the sheet that you want to affect, enter the information you want to affect using this very simple syntax of the sheet name and the specific cell location, and then you can read from it using the dot value attribute of the cell that you're interested in.